have always, always loved old houses. I love the architecture, I love the history, I love the romance of an old house, and I thought it would just be the coolest thing in the world to buy an old house and fix it up. We found this little gem, it was about 15 miles south of Madison, Wisconsin, in a small town called Stoughton, Stoughton, Wisconsin. And it was very old. The, the original part of the house was built in 1858, so it was pre-Civil War. And then it had been expanded and added on to, and it sort of morphed into this Victorian style that it was. I think the actual name of the style of our house was Queen Anne. It was a Queen Anne Victorian. I have a picture of it. We can look at it when, when we're all done here. By the time we got to it in 1995, y'all, it needed some help. It, uh, the roof needed to be completely replaced, and the front porch was sagging, and, and the windows needed repair. It was a hot mess, inside and out. And I thought it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my whole life. My husband and I are standing in front of the sold sign, and we're looking up at it, you know, and I'm like, oh, honey, you know, it's just going to take a little bit of love, and this house is going to be beautiful again. And he said, you know, honey, it's going to take a little bit of love and a whole lot of money to make this house <laughs> beautiful again. So the day that we closed on the house, we were sitting at the title company, and if you've been through this, you know that they make you sign your name on 1,000 pieces of paper. And so we're signing and initialing, signing and initialing, when for whatever reason, the realtor leans across the table and she says, oh, just so you know, it's haunted. <laughs> And we're like, what? What did she just say? That was a really odd thing to say. So we close on the house, we get the keys, and we start moving in. We just put the last piece of furniture down the last box. When my husband looks at his watch and says, you know what, I got to go to the airport and catch my flight. So his job required him to travel every week. He would leave on Mondays and come home on Thursdays. So I said, so you're going to be leaving me to unpack all of these boxes in a haunted house? And he said, oh, yeah, that's right. He said, you know what, I'll give you a call when I get there tonight. Let me know if you run into someone you don't recognize. <laughs> and so that was kind of our joke. He would call during the week when he was gone and say, how was your day? What did you get done? And have you made any new friends in the house? <laughs> and so this kind of inspired me because I really did want to delve into the history of the house and find out exactly who had lived there. What were their names in case, you know, any of them were still like hanging around. So this was in 1995, and this was uh, before Google was a thing or a verb. And so I instead had to physically go up to the Historical Society, which was um, in the, on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And I spent many, many, many Saturdays there, going through microfilm and looking at te uh, tax records, census records, looking at you know, um, obituaries and things like that. Come to find out that there was one family that had owned this house the longest. Their last name was Cold, C-O-L-D. Jens and Ingeborg Cold had uh, bought that house in 1875, and someone from their family had, they lived there, and they sold it uh, in 1940. So it was in their family for 65 years. I got to know the Cold family very well. I knew everything about them. They had five kids. I knew all their names. I knew when they were born, what they did for a living, when they were married, and when they died. And so I thought it was just kind of a neat connection because all these people that I was reading about lived and breathed in the same space that I was living in right now. They walked, we walked through the same doors and saw the same crown molding and walked up the steps and slept in the same bedrooms. I just, I just felt like it was a neat connection. And speaking of neat connections, I, even before that silly realtor said anything about haunted, I always felt, always, that there was someone else in the house with us, always. And that wasn't necessarily a scary thing or a bad thing because as long as I lived there, we lived there, I felt very gathered in, very watched over and guarded and protected. And I felt, my husband didn't feel this so much, but I always felt very comforted by whatever it was in that house. I felt very, very, very comforted. So, um, yeah, that was, there was very many uh, interesting and unexplainable things that happened when we lived in the house. And I also felt like there was more than one person or thing in the house. There was a, it was a group effort to watch over us. And that happened to be true, by the way. And I found that out at, at some point, but that's another story for another, another Saturday. <laughs> so to this story, we had lived in the house for about three years, and I had continued to go up to the Historical Society. We continued to work on fixing up the house. And I was sitting in our office one day at my desk, and all of a sudden, I smelled a cigar. And it wasn't like it was a whiff of a cigar. It was like someone was standing behind me smoking a cigar. And I was like, who, who is in my house smoking? There was nobody there. I couldn't see anybody. I walked out, and it was very prevalent in the first floor. So the first floor was our office, the dining room, the kitchen. There was the foyer, the entryway with the staircase. And then there was this very large um, living room. 
and it used to be two rooms. It used to have been a back parlor and a front parlor. And it was very prevalent there. And this happened to me a couple of times, and always when I was alone in the house. I was, my husband was never home when this happened. And I thought, well, maybe I'm kind of losing it, you know. I don't know. But I had a cleaning lady who came and helped me out a couple of times a month. And she came to me at one point and said, this is really weird, but I've smelled cigars the last couple times I've been here. And I'm like, yes, OK, I'm not crazy. Yay, good. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, it was shortly after that that I made another trip up to the Historical Society and started, um, or continued reading about the Cold family. And I started reading an obituary of um, a, a member of their family. It was actually their son-in-law. He had married their oldest daughter, Clara. This man's name was Chris Gender, and he had been on business down in New Orleans and had gotten mugged. And he had sustained such a severe head injury that it was actually a brain injury. They brought him back to Wisconsin to try and recover, but then he uh, contracted meningitis and he died on November 1st, 1900, and he was 45 years old. The uh, obituary went on to explain that this man, Chris Gender, whose real name was Casper, <laughs> Casper Christopher Gender, was a very prominent businessman. He was well known and very popular because he was the owner and operator of a very large cigar factory. Oh. And I read that and I thought, well, there it is. I thought, now I know who's been smoking in my house. So I was like, okay, so what do I do with this? You know, why is he here and what does he want and what do I do? So I thought about it, I made a plan, and I waited. So um, it was quite a while later when I was alone in the house and I was again sitting at my desk and I smelled cigars. So I thought, here we go. So I turned around and I just started talking. And I said, Mr. Gender, I know you're here and I'm, I'm glad you're here. And I want you to know that we are, we are working really hard to make this house beautiful again. And it's not just to make it pretty, it's because we want to honor the history of this house and the memory of the people who were a part of this, this house's history, and that means you. We remember you, Mr. Gender, you have not been forgotten. Yep, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing, crickets, crickets. And I'm like, I'm an idiot. I just, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so, what did happen was that the smell of cigars for just a, an instant got really, really strong and then it, it sort of dissipated again and went away. And I never smelled cigars in that house again. 